I stopped investing in stocks from the year 2022 onwards. So prior to that, I vividly remember in 2020 when the Corona crash happened, I've invested in some couple of stocks like National Aluminium, Apple, Kotak Bank, you no know, Asian Paints, multiple stocks. And the next one and a half years, it gave me huge returns, almost 300% returns. And once I sold all the stocks, I decided I'm not going to invest in stocks anymore. I switched completely to index funds. And this switching from moving from stocks to index funds has happened mainly because of one simple article that I've read. See, with respect to stocks investing, many people can easily identify the entry point, but most people struggle with the exit points. So we tend to say, I'm investing in stocks for long term. So this long term is very subjective in nature. For some people, it could be five years. For some people, it could be 10 years or 15 years. But most people do not have any timeline. They just say it is long term. I'll exit only whenever it is required. But we always say, like as Warren Buffett said, you have to buy low and sell higher. You have to be greedy when others are fearful or you have to be you know, very fearful when others are greedy. All these terms looks really good. See, when the crash really happened, for an example, during this 2020, even though I could have invested much higher cash during that time, I was not able to do it. Imagine everybody would have gone through the 2020 crisis, right? So compared to 2008 global financial crisis, 2020 was totally different. It was not any financial crisis. It was catastrophic. Like our loud ones were you no know, dying because of COVID. Even our neighbors were getting affected. We were not even able to step out of our own home. So when the whole world was collapsing, how can you think about investing? So even though I was waiting for such a kind of crash to happen from 2008, because during 2008, I started trading, but I did not have enough capital. In 2020, I had enough capital, but during that time, I couldn't invest beyond 10 lakhs. Even though I could have invested more than 50 lakhs, I couldn't do it because I still remember messaging my HDFC, you know, relationship manager, asking her whether my FD in HDFC is safe. So that was the kind of mindset that I had during that crash. So when I was worrying about my own FD, thinking that the bank might collapse, how can I invest in markets? So even though I invested in 10 lakhs in markets, I thought that is the percentage of risk that I can take at that time. But I could have taken much higher risk because that is one kind of a no lifetime opportunity, but I still missed. And second thing is, when you're investing in stocks, we always tend to compare with index returns. Okay, my portfolio has given 30% returns. How much the index has given? If the index has given 35% returns, even though you should be happy with the 30% returns, you will not be happy because you are not able to beat the index. So every single time, whether your portfolio is performing well or not, you keep comparing with the index. And only if your portfolio beats the index in the long run, you would be really happy. But any kind of momentum portfolio or any kind of portfolio, whatever the stocks that you have, there will be times where you would be underperforming the overall index. So during that time, the conviction towards your portfolio will decrease. You tend to doubt your own investing skill sets and you will not be able to stick to it. So because just because you're not even able to beat the index, you tend to think it doesn't make sense doing all this analysis, investing in stocks because I'm not even able to beat the index. So this comparison factor will always pull down your conviction with respect to your stocks. So that is also one of the reason I stopped investing in stocks. And the most important criteria for completely moving to index fund is this simple story which I've read in an article. So there is a person called Captain George and this happened in the year to, no, 1800. And this Captain George, what he did was he'll take a big you know, ship and across he'll take some sailors along with him and he'll go into the ocean. You know, it, it'll be a long, long drive. I mean, long, long uh, boat sailing part which takes months to reach to a certain place where they hunt the whales. So their primary motive is to hunt bigger whales. And hunting whales is not only for meat consumption. During those time, if you could hunt one big whale, you are totally set at least for 10 to 15 years. That is the kind of money that you could make by hunting whales. Because once you hunt the whales, you know the extraction that you get from the whales, like the whale's blood, the whale's saliva, everything out of whales is used for industrial purposes. They say that the whale's wax, which you could extract from whales, is largely used in industrial uh, you know, part where that itself plays a vital role. So all they have to do is they just go on hunting whales and get the whales back and you know they segregate that into multiple parts and extract the necessary 
important parts of wales and distribute among the industries and they make tons of money so many people used to do this and the thing is this specific task of hunting whales and you no know, giving it to industries was one of the top five industries during that time so just like how you are considering it industry financial sector transportation sector right now so during those time hunting whales itself was one of the top five industries and eventually more and more uh, you no know, uh, people started discovering some things and more and more discoveries started happening eventually few years down the line and the moment they were able to figure out the kerosene crude oil and everything the oil exploration started and once the oil exploration started the industrial revolution boomed and people were relying on this whale extraction for their you know industry to run they were not relying on it anymore because there was a substitute that they found which is these crude oils and everything so the whole industry of whale hunting has gone down drastically so people who used to go for whale hunting and you no know, get the whales and where they were able to set for 10 to 15 years because of making the fortune through hunting whales that industry itself collapsed drastically and people still go for whale hunting but it is not for these kind of purposes it's only for hunting the whales for meat purposes so the whole industry itself which was one of the top five industry this hunting whale itself has gone drastically out of the business so i invest only in nifty bees and junior bees that's all and i wanted to invest for 20 30 40 years this is kind of an investing habit which i want to continue for the rest of my life where just like our parents who started investing in land and no once you know matured enough they started giving your assets from parents so what they do is they kept investing in these kind of lands and they gave it to us as kind of an asset that is the maximum investment they would have done during their generation in our generation these asset classes like real estate might not be really liquid enough and it might not see the same kind of tremendous rise which we have seen in our parents age so if i have to give certain you no know, assets to my own kid i wanted to focus on these liquid assets which is primarily equity so when i am betting on my own life savings for 30 40 years or no such a long period will i really have a conviction to the investing in any specific individual stocks or group of stocks will i be you no know, confident enough to say okay this stock i am investing right now will still be there after 30 or 40 years no way i can say that for conviction but when i invest in index funds i can definitely say for sure that on the long run definitely economy is going to go up and even this index funds Will definitely going to give you at least 10 to 12 percent of returns so an average returns which i can make over a 30 or 40 years can compound extremely well and also by investing 20 percent of my income in stocks every single month i can pledge that and use that as my trading corpus so my trading corpus can also increase and side by side my overall you know, wealth generation through index investing can also happen and also any kind of individual news about any stocks like you know st the news which recently came from adani you know hiddenberg report or you no know, few years before there was news about nestle where people started banning maggi so when these kind of events happen even there was a, some fire broke out in maruti you no know, facilities so these individual news will greatly impact your decision making process when you're investing in stocks portfolio but as an index you don't need to be worried about it because by nature index is a trend following system so the actual process of adding in good companies and removing bad companies if you could remember dhfl and s bank were part of nifty 50 and now they are not part of nifty 50 so the actual process of maintaining the index itself is kind of a long term trend following good stocks stays in bad stocks stays out and this investing habit for a 30 to 40 years period when you have to do you need to have a strong conviction and that conviction i can never get it in stocks because end of the day it is not the business that you are investing in it is the people who is running that business if they fail obviously the whole investment value will fail so for that reason i'm totally avoiding stocks and sticking only to index funds and also one more thing you take sensex or you take dow jones you take any of the indices say dow jones is there for hundreds of years and sensex is there for almost 30 40 years if you check at the start of sensex whenever the sensex was launched what was the uh, no top 30 companies which were part of sensex out of those 30 companies how many companies are still there which are part of index only very very few just four or five rest of the companies either went bankrupt or not uh, not part of index anymore similarly with respect to dow jones when it started currently if you see with respect to nifty the major weightage will come from financial sectors or it sectors 
and this sectorial rota rotation keeps you no know, changing with respect to dow jones when dow jones started the major contribution for dow jones was railroad transportation index specifically focusing on railroad because back then railways transportation played a vital role with respect to booming economy but now railways is, doesn't you know play a very big part so likewise a, a list of stocks which are part of sensex or which are part of dow jones you know, multiple years before will not be there in index right now it could have been gone bankrupt totally so in order to survive such a long period you will never know even a single catastrophic event can totally wipe out hundreds years you no know, a company which is there for hundreds of years for example consider lehman so lehman collapsed completely in 2008 which is more than 100 years old company even this general motors which was there for a long long period of time even that suffered consider companies like kodak when such a revolution happened you know where you no know, people started moving from film technology to digital photography and from digital photography it completely moved to mobile phones so how many of you are still carrying a digital phone cameras to take pictures we just take a selfie right so this revolution whenever it keeps happening it wipes out one complete industry itself that's a blackberry so all these are vital examples which were at one point of time the top market leader but the people who are running these businesses if they are reluctant to change their methodology change their view about the overall you know global view definitely they can't survive long enough so obviously a company which is part of you no know, any kind of indices or which plays a major major role in any kind of indices be it reliance be it amazon be it any company which is a top player in that segment right now might not be the top player in the next few years or the you know in next 20 or 30 years so it is very very difficult to capture these stocks and, and, and even if you capture these multi baggers you will not be able to hold on to, to for a prolonged period of time so exit plays a vital role in finding all the stocks or managing a stocks portfolio so if you are really good with exits you can stick to stock portfolio or else it's better to move to index funds so you have to ask yourself are you really good in picking the stocks and are you really good in exiting the stocks at the right time so if it is totally based on your conviction if it is really doing well and if you have the conviction you can go with it it is all about personal finance so that is why you say what works for me might not work for you but when my long term investing horizon is really really long i need to have a strong conviction and that conviction will come only with index funds for me so that is why i am investing in index funds so this is the reason you know, because you know many people ask the same question to me when i went to a you know the strategic convention that which happened last week in hyderabad so i told the same thing so my investing towards stock versus you no know, investing in index funds totally varies my risk appetite totally varies due to this reason i'm investing in index funds so this is what i wanted to convey in this video so hope you found it really helpful i'll see you guys next week with another video bye